Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Meet the Future presentation. We are very happy to have with us a delegation from uh, Georgia, uh, five new women film directors from Georgia will present their work. Uh, so it's our great pleasure to have them with us. Rea Apostolidis, the moderator, will uh, take it from here. Thank you so much. So Meet the Future is an initiative organized by the Greek Film Center that showcases the work of young emerging filmmakers from the Mediterranean and Southeastern Europe. And this year, as, as Jana said, the the focus is on Georgia, with five amazing female young filmmakers. And before they start, I'd like to ask uh, Manana Shuradzde <laughs> from the Georgian Film Center to say a few words about how they support documentaries in Georgia. Yeah, hello, thank you for coming. Nice to work. I now introduce us. My name is Manana Suraze. I am head of uh, film promotion uh, department at Georgian National Film Center. Uh, our organization was established 20 years ago, and the main aim is uh, to support uh, Georgian cinematography. And the main direction is to support uh, uh, film production. And we have many competitions. We are supporting the future films, short films, animation, documentary. Uh, also, we support and we help uh, filmmakers to attend international festivals, workshops, masterclass. And now I'm glad to introduce that we are presenting five new documentary film pro pro project. Uh, three of them is financed already financed by Georgian National Film Center. Uh, two project is uh, they have first step steps uh, and um, a bit shortly and uh, I wish them good luck. And uh, if you have any question about Georgian National Film Center uh, after presentation, I will answer. And thank you again for coming. Thank you, Shorana. Maradia Tsava, who's a journalist and documentary filmmaker. Uh, her first feature documentary, Water Has No Borders, premiered at Doc Leipzig last year, and uh, is also screening in CPH Docs uh, this month and many other festivals. And she's here with a film called Performance. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm Aradia Tsava from Tbilisi, uh, and I've, uh, I've started a new pro project, um, uh, which is in the very early development now. Uh, and this is my first pitching with this project. Uh, and I uh, want to concentrate on post-war post-war period in Georgia that took place in the 90s because we had two ethnical conflicts and one civil war. Uh, and afterwards, the country was in like real post-apocalyptic um, uh, reality. Uh, and I want to show uh, women in this reality uh, how, how they took a huge, a huge responsibility on, on themselves and uh, in these times um, um, I and grandmother uh, moved to a, a small town uh, to, pl to play uh, to stage several performances there uh, and it was absolute hunger and poverty there and, uh, and in her performances we see this uh, this like uh, awful reality there, and I, I have the archive footage of this of performances, and I want to use them, and also I want to see uh, I want to f follow a, a character, uh, one of the leading actresses, who had to move to Europe, uh, to Italy, to somehow to somehow survive. Um, uh, and uh, yes, so I w want to take these two, two, uh, two uh, worlds, like archive footage of, of my grandmother's art and also a real life of an actress who, who had to sac sacrifice her art to survive. And, and yeah. Maradia, you, you were saying that women played a really important role in, in yeah. after the war, helping Georgia to recover. 
and many of them are in Greece, and, and there's a strong Greek-Italian connection for... Yes, yes. Uh, since 2002, around, um, uh, around 700,000 women have left the country, uh, and uh, out of three and a half million. Uh, and um, like uh, Italy, Greece, and France, and US are the most popular destinations for them, yeah. Uh, and so, yes, I want to focus on this, uh, but I mean, the project is in its very early development now, and I'm, I'm searching for a anyone interested to co-produce, um, yeah. And as far as I know, there's never been a, a Greek-Georgian documentary co-production, and we're really hoping that the Greek producers here will, will meet you after at the drinks, uh, and that there will be some really yeah, partnerships. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to. Do you have something to show, Maradio? Uh, uh, yes. Clip? Yeah. Uh, yes, I have a research material. I would not call it trailer uh, for now because I only have three performances for, for now and I'm still doing the research. So it's only the footage of, of, of what I have now. So it's just like only like two minute research. So the reaction of the the reaction of the audience in to these performances after the war was very powerful. It's like it seems like something very special. Yes, and also in one of the performances, uh, actually the play tells the story of a theater group staging a play in these uh, very hard circumstances. And so I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking to use this footage as a very good um, uh, tool to show what was ha happening there. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, one of the actresses has a monologue <laughs> about uh, like not being able to feed her children and, and being like f frozen and so on and so on. And she is the one I will be following uh, to Italy. In Italy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So next is Tanta Gabricidze, <laughs> who has over 15 years of experience in filmmaking. Uh, her last documentary, The Trader, was awarded at Sundance and screened at Hot Dogs and many other festivals. <laughs> um, and it's the first Georgian film to be distributed uh, on Netflix. Is that correct? 
Uh, and Tamta is here to present her film Mugamati, which is financed by the Georgian Film Center uh, and uh, national broadcaster in Georgia. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Tamta, and uh, the new project I am working now is Mugamati, as you mentioned. It's uh, a musical documentary um, with the mystic elements. Uh, so a few years ago, I discovered a tiny garden, uh, beautiful and uh, very unusual and interesting for me because of the people who live and spend their days in this garden. These are old men who play a duduk. It's an old uh, musical instrument. Uh, this genre is quite unpopular in these days and probably this is the last generation who um, play this music and uh, who live uh, this way of uh, life. So um, they spend their days in this garden waiting for someone uh, to take them and ask to perform. And these places of performances are quite uh, unusual. For example, they play in front of the hospital, um, uh, believing that it will help in recovery of a sick child or, for example, in funerals. Now they uh, are... Um, uh, kind of rented by the Stalinists who believe that their music is able to find the hidden status of the um, Stalin. Uh, so they spend, so this film will tell about this culture which is uh, kind of dying together with them, but this tiny garden appeared the gathering place of a young generation who live an uh, uh, absolutely different life, who uh, protest, who pre perform uh, in front of the parliament, and uh, it's a kind of conflict of these two generations. But the most interesting for me is that, it, for me, it's a cycle. The form has changed, but the cycle is the same. Like, uh, these young people also do believe that their music can make uh, really important changes. So, yes, briefly, the project is about it. Um, and I have uh, some mm, small uh, video material, which is more kind of mood, uh, mood uh, and uh, Tamta they've, uh, the musicians have found the statues uh, uh, yes with my help they yeah. will find the statue uh, yeah. and where were the statues were they, where were they hidden uh, it's uh, hidden uh, in the yard of a billionaire uh, so no one knows the reason why he hides the statue but probably the reason is it, because it's quite um, expensive in prices, like uh, the prices uh, right now, it's more than five million, so uh, the statue is hidden in his yard. Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so the story will tell about the crazy uh, country and this uh, crazy lifestyles, but the same, same cycle, like the past, present, and future, which will become the past in the nearest future. Okay. <laughs> and, and the film is in, it's in advanced development and you're looking for a co-producer, oh, ideally? Yes, uh, we're looking for co-producers, for funds, and uh, if anybody is interesting, we are open for uh, discussing the <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Yes. So you, should we see the clip? Or yes, yeah? please. Thank you. Stalin is deadly, that's why Stalin said it. 
خاکیش مراقب است با مویش خوب که دوی مورد خسارت زدی در دست هم سر. دستانم گاه زل بگیدی بزرگ چرت بیش چقدر باس سخت گیت خنالدی مگیت خنال دم مگیت خنال So Keti Kabanadze uh, is a highly talented director whose first feature doc premiered last year in competition at IDFA. Uh, she's here to present a film about a unique artist called Karen Batok. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, so I'm here to present uh, a film which is uh, in an early development stage uh, and I have not uh, started to film it yet, but uh, the main protagonist of the film is uh, someone I know for a while, for uh, eight years almost. And uh, she's an artist. She uh, lives in a small uh, Georgian village with her parents. And uh, she uh, makes this kind of post-punk uh, avant-garde music. Uh, and she's also a poet. Uh, but uh, she has been always, uh, since I met her, she's been on my mind as a character because she's a fascinating uh, personality. But uh, the main uh, moment uh, when the uh, idea came to actually make a film about her was uh, this one weird gathering I was attending. It was um, a kind of an after party of some illegal queer rave where a bunch of uh, hyperized people were uh, in the midday trying to find right music to listen to. And they would put, I don't know, Rammstein, and it would vary towards um, uh, Rihanna. And everybody was so stressed about music and fighting over it. And I was just, uh, uh, I just remembered Karen, uh, my friend, an artist, uh, who was totally unfamiliar to all these people in the room, and I just put on her music and her videos, uh, and everybody was kind of mesmerized. They sat quietly and they literally listened to all her YouTube channel uh, in that day. And I was thinking, yeah, like you can listen and watch her at the same time for a longer period of time, and uh, it really. Uh, and I always wanted to try uh, to make a music documentary because I, I love this direction. And um, yeah, so she's my friend. And um, uh, and yeah, uh, what I will... Sh yeah, I just wanted to say what, what's really special about her. She lives with her parents and... Yeah, and, and, uh, and I have like what I'm going to show is a video which is uh, shot by her parents. So basically, she uh, records herself in the bathroom because it's the quietest, uh, most like quiet space around her. And, uh, and she does all her music videos with the help of her parents and she does all the setups by herself, all the closing. So she's like really mm, uh, doing it by herself. But with the music also, she's collaborating with uh, different uh, musicians, mainly not from uh, the same country, not from Georgia. Like she finds some people through internet. So um, recently, uh, one of their songs got really uh, not popular, I would say, but it hit 100,000 views. So uh, some label offered them to tour uh, a few European festivals. But yeah, like let's see uh, this small part of her music video, which is shot by her parents, and yeah.
So her parents are doing an incredible job, huh? They're very, very <laughs> good at yeah, it. Yeah, actually, um, like, she really tries to instruct them before, like, do like this, do like that. And, uh, yeah, they have a good experience now, I guess, to do this because uh, it's a lot of videos I've done for her. And, and yeah, like, it's kind of, uh, they do it, make it work. And, uh, and I really do like as an, uh, as her as an artist, also her lyrics uh, really... Mm, feel important for me uh, and, and yeah, I, I really believe in her as a person and as an artist so I, I would really love to collaborate with her and make this uh, film happen, yeah. And Katie, you, you mentioned you were also going to follow her in the summer, she's going on tour in Europe? Um, yeah, most probably uh, because this tour is going to happen in this summer, uh, so uh, most probably I won't be able to follow her through the whole tour, but a uh, but few places maybe, yeah. Thank you so much. And you're, you're in uh, early, mid-development or...? No, I would say it's a really early, early, early development, development. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the good part is that we know each other for a long time, so, uh, yeah. Thank you. And last but not least, Elena Mika Berize, uh, who was born in Georgia in 1988, but emigrated to Belgium after, because of the Civil War. And she's here to present her first feature documentary, Blueberry Dreams, that tells the universal story of growing up in the shadow of war. Uh, the film is a French co-production. It's supported by the Georgian Film Center. It won the Eurasia, Eurasia Prize at Synodoc and also a Doc Leipzig Co-Pro Market Award. Elena. So, hello everyone. I will keep my papers because I'm a bit nervous. But So, uh, thank you for having us here first. And as Ria said, I'm working on a feature documentary called Blueberry Dreams. So, um, this film explored the uh, hopes and dreams of um, young people living on a divided land. But before talking about the story, I would like to say a few things. So, I'm, uh, I was born in Georgia, I have a Georgian father, and my mom comes from Abkhazia. It's a breakaway region within Georgia, ruled by a Russian-backed government. And uh, since 30 years, uh, the scars of the war are still present in Abkhazia through uh, patriotic billboard, um, destroyed buildings and uh, Russian propaganda, of course. And Russian propaganda casts a, f a shadow over the future of this region. Um, so during the early 90s, uh, because I had family from both sides of the conflict, I, we had to go to somewhere, so we ended up in Belgium. And um, after 22 years, I decided to rediscover my home and my, where I was coming from. And I went back to Georgia, learned Georgian language, and also I wanted to go to Ab Abkhazia. While Georgians have no right to go to Abkhazia after the war, I had still uh, the chance to go there three times because I have still family living there. Uh, what I saw there, it was like a place stuck in time and in space. Um, and those artificial borders, they are like cutting off communities from basic needs and most important from each other. So the mixed families cannot meet anymore. And also uh, it questioned um, identity issues because they don't all recognize passports and they cannot travel also. And, uh, but the good thing is that I met my two little cousins there, 10 and 13 years old. And I was really surprised to see that they have Im imagination bigger than ever in this closed box, so they inspired this film. But also I understand that if I want to uh, talk and show this region, I have also to uh, um, analyze the, um, uh, how to say, the dynamics of the borders and also the, the, re the, the region uh, touching and bordering Abkhazia. So I went to Samegrelo, it's a Georgian region and a um, very strange place because it, it has uh, checkpoints, uh, uh, separation lines, Russian border guards, etc. So it's a very, um, very strange atmosphere. And uh, I met there two boys, also same age as my cousin. And um, Georgi, the biggest one, was born in 2008. Uh, in, uh, he, he, 
her mom was going to Senaki, a, a town in San Megrelo, and the hospital was bombed. So he was born in the middle of the war. So uh, even with this harsh time in their life, the mother and the dad uh, still believe in peace and still believe in their country, and they decided to put all their savings and their dreams into a blueberry field for the kids. So it's a gift for the kids. But the kids, they have different dreams. <laughs> they dream to go away, far away, like birds. They dream to be a bird and go fly to Japan. So this is a film about how legacy of war conflicts uh, affects the imagination of kids and also affects their daily life and their universe. So we have a Georgian National Film Center on board, uh, French co-producers, and we are, uh, I'm not a producer, so I don't know exactly, but we are looking for maybe a third partner and also uh, f uh, financial help, fun funding, because we want to continue shooting as I want to follow the birth of the blueberries. So that's the, in more um, symbolic way, I want to be really there because I followed since the beginning one plant and now there is, something is growing. So it's take, it takes time. And maybe I can show you the clip. Ich <laughs> Ich <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, this film would like to give a voice and a message of hope from those two little guys. <laughs> and they say hi, by the way, <laughs> in a message. But uh, most important, by making a film about... Um, current occupation in Georgia, conflicts and borders, I could not uh, remain silent uh, and not to speak up about what is happening and w the horrific situation in Ukraine. And we filmmakers from Georgia, um, with, we are thinking about our colleagues, friends, and all Ukrainians today, uh, especially Karina Kostina is a producer from Tabor Production. They are working really hard to um, bring us some news and hopefully good news soon. And we are standing here uh, by their side and we are calling for peace. Uh, war has returned to Europe, you, says the European officials, but wars never disappeared. Uh, we just choose that as they are far away, we, we pretend they don't exist, but it's wrong. Uh, we should live by each other's happiness and not misery. There is a room for everyone, but we lost the way to it. Innocent men, women, children, animals are victims of a system, a system put in place by big deciders who have poisoned our world. Millions are f fleeing today from bombs, holding hands and crying in silence. Since the beginning of humanity, it is like this. And today the war knocked at your door 
And because Putin decided, like in 2008 in Georgia, like in Chechnya, like in Afghanistan, like in Syria, that a country, and today it's Ukraine, has no right to exist. But it's not a war against only Ukraine. It's a war against our freedom, our values, our peace and our future. Today, Ukrainians are fighting for our freedom and let's fight with them and unite. We are not naive. Films cannot stop the war, but they can surely change the minds of people. Because we are showing the fragility of this world, the fears, the struggling, the truth. And we would like you to continue shooting films, telling stories, but only with the seek of truth and uh, goodwill as a core, as a main core. So let's go back to this humanity that we all deserve. Because, and today we are all Ukrainians. So yes, Slava Ukraine. Thank you. I think after this we can go outside and hopefully meet other people. Um, ah, yes, does anybody ha want to ask questions? I think after this it's difficult then <laughs> to ask questions. I think we can go outside, it's the drinks, and uh, we can meet pe you can meet other filmmakers and take some air because we're all upset now, so...